Good morning. I feel like I haven't vlogged in a really long time. I hope you're all doing really well. Um, yeah, I didn't vlog like the last couple weeks, it feels like. Stuff happening in my personal life. Alex has been away, slight family emergency. And also my friend was visiting last week. So I really want to just enjoy that. Um, if you want to see what I was up to that week actually, because we went and did loads of really fun things around Cornwall. Um, I did take lots of pictures and I'll be sharing that on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, if there's like stuff I'm not sharing on YouTube, it's over there. It is Sunday and I wasn't planning on vlogging today, but I just had the urge because sometimes I don't vlog for a while and then it makes me feel a bit funny because even though this is my job and I always say how I like try and have boundaries when it comes to vlogging and you know, taking time off work and stuff. This is also just really fun for me and I forget that. It's weird when you do this job for a long time. You can go down the road of it becoming, all becoming very clinical, not clinical, like very like professional, business-like and it can take away the fun, it can take away the spontaneity, it can take away some of the enjoyment when you have too many like rules around when you're doing stuff or like how you do things and Part of the, the fun and the originality of social media and YouTube and why people watch YouTubers is because it's got a level of like spontaneousness about it. It's not like a movie or TV show. It's just whatever. And I find it very motivating. So it's Sunday. Alex has gone out to watch the football. And it's just one of those days where, I don't know, because I've been away, because I had like a week off work and stuff, transitioning back into things. It can be difficult and I can end up having like a lazy day where I do nothing and I just, yeah, it's motivating to film because I'll probably get on with things. So I'm making myself breakfast. This is a smoothie with some raspberries and banana. I will add some flax, a scoop of form protein powder, some soy milk and a little bit of water. I will link this cup below because a lot of you asked about it the other time I showed it. It's very cute, I use it for coffee too. Delicious. I am gonna show you some updates because there's been lots happening actually at the house and stuff that's maybe I've not shared a, a lot of. So the hallway has been plastered. It's not 100% finished, but it will be finished hopefully this week and the lights can go back on, cupboards can be sorted and then I can start thinking about paint colours and stuff. I'm not rushing this hallway project whatsoever. A huge thing I've learned with renovating is that when you rush things, you get really stressed. <laughs> I'm gonna have to prime all the walls and then I'm gonna have to decide on paint colours and decorating and stuff. So it's a bit more of a complicated space than just a box bedroom. There's like stairs involved, there's cupboards. The painting process is just going to take a lot longer. The outside has had a lot of progress. I don't know if I... I think I did do a bit of vlogging, but I can take you outside as well because we've been using our patio. And it's actually the dreamiest thing ever. When my friend was visiting, we had a barbecue outside. We sat and enjoyed the sun. We had the fire pit on and it was really surreal to sit there and think, wow, this is what I spent... What we, what we spent this time and money on this patio for to just be able to use it and relax in it and enjoy it with friends and family it just was the dream and it made me have a really lovely pinch me moment so yeah um the house is a mess though because of the hallway it's really integral space everything has got filtered into all the other rooms and everything is dusty and everything is gross so i really want to do a lot of tidying and cleaning to make myself feel better the weather is iffy, so if I have some time, I will go outside and do a little bit of planting because I got, got some plants yesterday. Let me show you the hallway though. So as you can see, we have plaster drying. It's all been freshly plastered because the walls were pretty bad and also there was lots of holes from electric work that we've had done. Um, obviously, this bit at the end is not done yet, but it's really nice actually it just feels really clean and lovely seeing it like this because it was quite bad before um, and it's dried really well we put the dehumidifier in here to help the drying process we kept the lovely curve here he did ask if i wanted it straightened out and i was like nope i love the curve it makes it feel old i don't want anything to 
start feeling new or anything. I think they've basically done the big main bits and they've left the little bits, which makes sense. So the little bit here and here, we filled this hole in because it just felt pointless and it just was a place to capture dust. And it just feels a bit less higgledy piggledy because it's already a higgledy piggledy space because this is where the ensuite is. So the, the ceiling is already different heights here, here, here. And then this bit comes out because I think that's where the, the waste pipe is. And it, I just wanted to simplify things um, a little bit. And then um, this cupboard will be put back on, but we'll rebuild the doors so they have some sort of panelling and they look nice. And I'll paint them in so that they look lovely. Same goes for this one under here. And this one, this will be built in so it's flush to the wall so it's not sticking out and then I think maybe like tongue and groove or shaker style paddling and then we have to decide on a wall colour oh also yeah we got rid of the window there was a window here which would have been a cute feature if we didn't have these um cupboards but because the cupboards were in the way of the window it just looked funny we've got to pick a colour it's a very dark hallway so you either go down the road of like making it dark and painting it like a dark blue or a dark green you go for something really colourful, I've seen that before, where you go for a really colourful hallway just because um, it's so dark, or it's difficult because before it was kind of this murky, I don't know, almost like stony, greeny, neutral colour, and it just felt very murky, but that could have been because it wasn't decorated and it just didn't look finished. So we'll see, we'll do lots of paint swatches. I'm either gonna go for a neutral colour, like a grey beige colour, or I'm gonna go for blue. So we'll see. I kind of like the idea of blue because it's like bright and a color, but it's it's neutral enough. Um, or this color. This is Skimming Stone from Farrumble. And I really love it in here because it just looks like a stone. It looks gray in some lights. It looks yellow in other lights. It looks green. So it's kind of got lots of things going on with it, but it's whether it will become a bit murky if it's in the hallway. Down this end it's fine, like it's much brighter down this end because we've got the, the door, but down this end it's just very dark and even darker now we've removed that window. But I'm kind of tempted to paint the stairs a colour as well. Got to get on Pinterest. These are the plants that I bought yesterday. It was really funny, we went to Penrose National Trust site near us and there was this beautiful plant growing up the side, I'll put a picture because I took one, and I was like, wow, that plant is so beautiful, I'd love to have something like that at our house. We went to Tesco and they literally had it in the entrance, it's a hebe. Lots of you mentioned this actually as something to plant behind the sofa. Um, it's a lovely colour, so I'm gonna plant this. I've got four of them. Some of them will go in the flower beds, some of them will go behind the sofa that we built in, so. We'll see, but um, I'm trying to do like all the gardening bits like in sections so that it doesn't become overwhelming because with a garden of our size, it can, it could quickly become overwhelming. <laughs> we had someone come the other day about uh, cutting back the trees, which will be really, really good because that's not a job that we can do. We don't have the equipment, unfortunately, to do something like that. That would be really satisfying, but I'm trying to treat, yeah, each section as a as a job so like you would decorate a room i'm doing it like this flower bed that flower bed then we'll work our way down um and just letting go some of that pressure because i do that to myself and it is not helpful um and it will be really fun to do it this way i want to get some lavender i want to get some box hedging and yeah fill out that flower bed and then i think i think what i'll do is i'll leave the rest of it until the spring, because I think in spring would be the best time to start planting like little flowers to fill it out. Like I'd love to plant some verbena, um, some alliums, um, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna do a bit more research once the sort of shape of the flower beds is done. So there's hedges and there's the hydrangeas and lavender, I can start filling them out with other things. I do want to move the roses back though, potentially to the flower beds there because they were so beautiful. So I will look up when the best time to do that is. To, I think I'll chop them all back and move them back because we moved them to the trellis and I kind of don't want the trellis anymore. I hate it. Don't tell Alex. Alex is working hard. Say hello, you've not been in the vlog in ages. Hi. Look, he's got cute long hair. 
<laughs> you're wearing your PEI shirt. Mm -hmm. My parents went to Lon uh, London. You have the sticker on it. <laughs> my parents went to PEI to visit my family, my grandma and uncle. Yeah. And I bought back Alice's lovely t shirt. Nice. I, what did you get? My grandma nice. gave me this from her house, and I love yeah. it. So cute, matches our other things we've got over here. Our other little blue and white china crockery. Alex is making the bed all fresh. Roxy just had a good old brush and I gave her a bath last night. She's sulking because she's not been out yet. We're taking her out shortly. I think she detected that I was changing the bed because she always likes to sit. She gets in a mood when we change the bed. Can you just show off your fluffy ears, please? Can we show off your fluffy ears, please? Look at how fluffy you've been bathed and you've been brushed and you feel like heaven on earth. She's the softest puppy in the world right now. You feel so soft. She got a lot of attention yesterday. Someone stopped and said, hey, can my, um, my daughter ask a few questions about your dog? And she was like, how old is she? Is she fully grown? What breed is she? And we were telling her all about Roxy. And then her mum was like, oh, that's an option then. I think because they liked the fact that she was this size fully grown and you're just beautiful with your hair this length aren't you <laughs> she's so cute look at your eyes look at your eyes bobby quick t-shirt change then huh quick t-shirt change then it's a day later <laughs> no <laughs> off to see the pretty i guess that jump cut was it was actually 24 hours <laughs> i feel like hairy because I just brushed Roxy and I've got like sun cream on. So I feel like there's hair all over my face. I need to get changed because that's something that really helps to be, helps me anyway to be motivated to get on is to put clothes on. Maybe that's not rocket science for some, but sometimes it's easy to just be in your pajamas at home, isn't it? So I'm gonna put some actual clothes on. And I'm gonna do like a sweep of the upstairs. So I'm gonna like put everything away, hoover and uh, make it feel all clean. Alex is already on it with the bed, so that's wonderful. I still feel like there's hairs on my face. My hair, since I've had the little um, shorter pieces cut, does get a little annoying, because like today I just want to put my hair back. But if you put your hair back, the pieces fall out. And then if you put hair clips in your hair, it just doesn't look very like, it doesn't look very nice. So I do love the look, the style, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna end up keeping it because it's kind of like an awkward in between. So I'd rather almost have like a fringe that was more permanent like that. Oh, wouldn't that look good though? I actually think that kind of makes your cheekbones pop, doesn't it, when you have a fringe? Or have it long. But yeah, right now I want to just put my hair in a low bun, but then the little pieces will come out unless I use like oil or anything. My hair's not greasy enough for that. <clears throat> I got this gorgeous scrunchie the other day from Meadows in a little shop in Penzance. I'm at home though, so what's the point? Maybe that is the point. Because look, that's not a good look, is it? <laughs> no, it is not. And then when you do that, it just doesn't. Oh, I'm some struggling. cool though how big it is because it like you can fully see it from the front <sighs> I did just try like five other things I tried to put it in a bun in a ponytail a French plait you know and your hair is just not cooperating so even though my hair is not really greasy, hello. Hello. I'm going to oil it and slick it back because I think it's because it's been like a couple days where I've ha I've had um, my hair wavy and I, I can't be bothered to like freshen it up. Usually, I would if I was to spray it all right now, let it go wet and let it dry again. It would look nice, but I'd have to like wear it down and I'm doing chores. So 
as much as I want to be one of those YouTube girlies who always looks very glamorous in her videos, and I'm very envious of those girls when I watch them, I think, wow, you, you always are in beautiful dresses, your makeup is perfect, your hair is perfect. I am not you. <laughs> and I'm so jealous because I wish I was because I'm so visible online and yet half the time I look like a slob. I'm so sorry about it, but I don't care enough. I suppose like when I go out, which is so funny because if I'm out right for the day and I'm putting a nice outfit on for an evening or the day or whatever, what you're gonna see like a hundred people throughout the day in the, on the street or in a restaurant or something. Yeah, I'm on here showing up for like thousands of people looking like a total and utter slob. And I should really reframe that state of mind because that's probably more visible. But when I'm in my home, I just can't get out of that mindset for some unknown reason. Anyway, I've just used the Miele rosemary oil. You can see how I used it. I don't know how many uh, pipettes or whatever you call it I used. Probably like four, three or four. I just kind of put it all the way around my head and then I use a last one in my hand to go through the ends. My hair is feeling really soft because I've been doing this so regularly really moisturising my hair so it doesn't feel like the ends are really dry compared to the roots which I think is important. This is the oil by the way, I'll link it. I got it from iHub. I do have a discount code so I will um, share that with you if you've been thinking to get a hair oil. Are you off? Yeah. Bye. Bye. Are you excited? Are you taking Roxy? No, I'll say Come on England, or come on Spain, depending on who wins, just edit the right one in. Don't you want England to win? Yeah, I'm joking. <laughs> oh. Please let me know if you care about football or not. I hate football, always have done, not interested. That's my hair done, a little scrunchy in there slicked back. I know a lot of you don't like um, me wearing big floaty dresses. This is one from Naked Generation if um, you're interested and you are someone who likes wearing big floaty dresses. But if I'm doing chores, is there nothing better than having your hair slicked out of your face and wearing a big floaty dress? Like, I know lots of you are like, Maddie, stop wearing big floaty dresses, show off your figure. I'm with you. I have body confidence issues. Um, so I'm not gonna be ever wearing a bodycon dress for you online. Like it's so comfortable, you don't get too hot, and I just love the feeling of it. Um, so yeah, maybe I'm not showing my figure off, but maybe that's what I want. <laughs> Spotted, we bought this yesterday in the natural store in Helston, um, this Magnesium Sleep from Better You. I use their uh, vitamin D spray as well, because Alex struggles with insomnia and getting to sleep, I bought this for him and I used it last night, so did he. We also got some magnesium tablets. I, ha I bought some other magnesium tablets, so there's different kinds. There's magnesium citrate, which is good for muscle pain and constipation, and then there's magnesium glycate, glycophate. Um, I will put on screen what it is because my brain is not remembering what it is. They're good for different things, basically. The, the, the second one is good for sleeping. So we have both for whatever you, whatever you need. We're gonna give it a go and see if it helps him because I'm such a believer in like holistic health. So it's not just one thing, it's the whole picture and trying to discover what the problem is. And for some people it could be anxiety, it could be, you know, a, an, a difficult evening routine that you're not sticking to. Like maybe, I know Alex, he goes on his phone before bed. That's, I've said to him that that's not great, but it might be a, a nutrient deficiency. For some people it might be that you're lacking in magnesium or vitamin D or whatever. So I always think it's a good shout to speak to your doctor and figure that out and also try different things. I'll report back and um, so far I think it has been working out quite well for me and this is a lovely smell before bed to just have that routine. I mean that alone just moisturising before bed is a lovely thing to do anyway but I'm going to stop blabbering on and I'm going to hoover.
upstairs is much cleaner and now I'm gonna make myself lunch. I bought a loaf of Vicky's Bread Bordelais sourdough that was reduced from four pounds 60 to 50p in the natural food store or the natural store in Helston. And I got some kimchi, the Complete Organics kimchi, um, which I absolutely love in a toasty with cheese. I think I first had this when I went to Pollen in Truro and now I love to make it at home. So I'm going to probably just do it in the frying pan. What should I? The thing is, I have a toasty machine, but it's the faff of getting it out because this cupboard, in fact, it's probably a admin house admin job I need to complete is organizing this cupboard because there's loads of things in there and I know that loads of them I don't use regularly. So I feel like they should be at the back and then the ones I use more regularly should be at the front. So I could just, cause I could not get the toaster machine out there right now. So I'm just gonna fry it and I'm gonna use the Cathedral City vegan cheese. And I'm so excited for this. relaxing afternoon I felt really tired I think because of the week we've had doing lots and we I did a lot of driving this week I wanted to rest so I didn't do anything crazy productive really I had a little nap watched some tv I've done a bit of tidying a bit of sorting and that's all really it's all I felt up to and I'm trying to embrace that those feelings a bit more because I find that when I force myself to do things when I'm feeling tired I burn out and I end up feeling rubbish for it because there are other days where I feel really motivated so trying to live with that feeling a bit more. Um, so that hopefully means tomorrow I'll feel a bit more refreshed. I think I'm gonna have a bath tonight. What I wanna do though is show you the things that I got this week antique shopping because we did quite a bit of antique shopping just um, when my friend was visiting and we went to Penzance first. Okay, so I got this painting in a shop in Penzance. It's a very beautiful shop. It's very Provence, Provencial, Provencial, Provencial and it's so gorgeous if you want that sort of style. Go in there for inspiration. I'll try and put on screen the name of these places and if I can't, um, then please go to Penzance and just explore all the antique shops because it's amazing. But I saw this on the wall. They had some with frames and I saw this and I thought I kind of want some more paintings that aren't like gold frames or really old paintings. I kind of want a few more that feel a bit newer and a bit brighter. So I went for this one that's just on a canvas and I kind of love that, that it just looks like I've painted it or something and I just put it on my wall, which I really want to do actually and I might do that soon because something like this, I know that I'd get a lot of enjoyment out of painting. I love the colours. Um, I like that it's almost a bit beaten up, like the canvas is a bit beaten up and I'm trying to build up my collection of paintings so that I can fill the bedrooms because, and the hallway as well when the hallway's done. This is a contender for the green bedroom though. And you can, you're gonna see a theme here <laughs> of what I got. There are actually a couple more things next door. Let me just go and grab them. The first shop we went into was actually in Newlyn because we went for lunch in Newlyn at a lovely pub in the beautiful sunny weather. And on the way back, there was a lovely little um, kind of like, What's it called? Like, not a junk shop. It's like a rummage kind of antique. It's like antiques, but also like bits and bobs. This beautiful painting of St. Michael's Mount and look how dinky and mini it is. This was 20 pounds. And she said that it was painted by someone who just cleared their house out. I think they were moving and she had painted it. And look how beautiful that is. So this is a really small one. Not sure where it will end up living, maybe in the hallway, because it's just so cute and yeah, I also want to get lots of um, pictures printed. I think I shared this in another vlog recently. I want to get lots of pictures, family pictures printed. And I might do a separate shop for like just frames and not worry about what's in the frame and fill them with 
uh, photographs. I definitely went for a theme. <laughs> Lots of uh, still life floral paintings. This is a watercolour, it was £25. I really love the wood frame. This is just so, so lovely. I think this could look, this could work in the kitchen um, or it could work in one of the bedrooms, but we'll see. I just want to have um, a selection of them so that when I go to do the space, I can have a look and think which one works and have the option because otherwise sometimes it doesn't quite work or doesn't look quite right. This is so beautiful as well. Another lovely wooden frame. This one's called Summer's Glory. 20 pounds, really good price. And this could be the coastal path anywhere in Cornwall, to be honest. It's just very Cornish looking and very beautiful. And then this one, this is a print. So this is 15 pounds. Whereas, is that a print or is that an actual painting? That also is a print. And then let's have a look at this one. Is this a painting? Yeah, that's a watercolor. This is a print and you can cut it as the most visibly a print. So I'd probably try and put this somewhere that was a bit darker, maybe not as obvious that you would see it, but I just thought the mounting of it was beautiful. And if you look closely, it's a uh, harbour. So on the back it says Morab Studio, Penzance, member of the Fine Art Trade Guild. Oh, that's the frame. Okay, no, the painting. For a painting by Stan Hope Alexander Forbes, 1857 to 1947. After he returned to England, he settled in Newlyn and joined with other artists to form the Newlyn Colony, where he became the doyen of the Plen R artists. So I just thought this was the most beautiful painting and I really want my home to be filled with Cornish paintings and Cornish artists and coastal paintings because it just feels very fitting and I just love them. I think they're beautiful. So I really like to get the art locally from antique shops or in the future if I have the money one day to invest in actual paintings. I really, I've said this before, I'd love to invest in a painting for the garage that was a like modern painting of Cornwall in some way and I see them every time I go out to galleries and I just think wow but then they're about three grand so not not in the budget right now when we're renovating that's the sort of thing to do in your 50s maybe oh yeah this this was cute as well another low tide St Mary's from a painting by Christopher Perry um, I think it's the Isle of Scilly Isles of Scilly so just so so cute I loved the green mounting as well it's got a really nice selection there and then in a, well, actually, let's stick to, yeah, no, we went to Falmouth another day to see the tall ships, which was a lovely day out. And we popped into one of the charity shops. It used to just be a normal charity shop, but now it's been revamped. It's a charity shop that used to just be a normal charity shop, and they seem to have revamped it to make it like an antique charity shop. And it's on the high street. Again, I'll try and remember what, it, what it's called or look it up online, but they have amazing things, and it's charity shop prices, like a little bit more pricey than a charity shop, but... Not really. These were each three pounds and they're these lovely botanical, like a uh, photo, what do you call them? Like, um, I remember doing this in art where it looks like basically they have it's not scanned. What's it called? Basically like it, it, to me, it looks like they've put flowers on a, um, on a scanner, not a scanner. Well, to me, this looks like a print. A block print kind of thing of a flower like almost like they've taken a photograph like they've developed they've literally put the flowers on the on the thing to develop and taken a picture that way that's what it looks like to me I can't think of the lingo right now because my brain is blank but it's got these lovely bluey tones and they match and I thought they would look lovely as a pair maybe in one of the bedrooms or in a hallway who knows but I'm thinking maybe in the pink bedroom because I've got a bit of a botanical theme happening in there and then I got these two where are these from no these were I think these were from the place in Newlyn some ships which is quite cute because it will remind me of this week as well all these paintings will remind me of this lovely week we had with Sophie and Charlie the tall ships so these are a lovely pair as well which could work in the hallway because I'm thinking of painting the hallway blue that could work Gosh, I really, I, I set myself a goal to get some paintings and I really have, I've worked my magic. This was from an amazing, amazing place in Falmouth. It's down an alleyway, like if you're coming off the harbour and going up to the main high street. And I'll put on screen the name of it because she did give me her card. She is going to an antique fair in Ennis Gardens in Penryn in September. 
So if you put in Ennis Gardens Antique Fair, it will come up for you. I think it's the 23rd and the 24th of September. I'm gonna go, I think, because she said that she's there and loads of other antique dealers in Cornwall. And she said it's really recommended. But she, this tiny little space she had and she had the most amazing things. So I picked up this painting. I'm pretty sure that's where I got it. And it's all um, thick and textured. So it's a really, really thick painting with all the paint, paint strokes. You can, can you see, they're like, they're raised from the, the canvas, which makes it look even more beautiful. I love the colors. I love that it's a bit more modern. And yes, I'm in love with that. Probably the best purchase was from this place. And it is this amazing painting of hydrangeas. I left the shop, I made my purchases, and then I saw this when I left. And I was like, oh my gosh, wow. And then Charlie and Sophie convinced me to buy it. And I love it. It is so stunningly beautiful. This will go in one of the bedrooms probably. Or it might go in the hallway. I don't know, we've got hydrangeas outside. So this just thought, I thought this would remind me of those hydrangeas and I love how it's so dark. I love that it's a real painting. It's got that lovely shine to it. I love the frame. It is just stunning and beautiful. And she said that she was grateful I bought it because I think I'm, <laughs> she said someone came in and they were gonna paint over it. So she was glad um that i'm just gonna be hanging on my wall so yeah i'm so happy for this i think this would look so good potentially in the green bedroom or the pink bedroom because like look at it it's just so stunning so so stunning and then the last couple things i got this was also from the same shop a very lovely herbs and spices the complete book of herbs and spices by claire lowenfield and philippa black and i thought i'd put this like literally on display i want to get a cookbook stand and I thought this would go on the island and it has beautiful um pictures inside I'm almost tempted if I find some of them that are, are very pretty taking them out and framing them like look I know that's like sacrilege some people say no you can't ruin a book like that but then I might get to enjoy it more just look, look how gorgeous all these illustrations are <sighs> my next goal as well is to also do a little bit of a painting session with my sister and make some modern art because like I said I don't want the house to become too full of old paintings because then it can feel can feel like you've not decorated and it can start to feel drab so um there is a fine line and um I do love it when you have like an old house with lots of various paintings and that will be the finishing touch so I think what we're going to do is we're going to sit down and um come up with some colour schemes for our houses and, and get some inspiration and, and do a little bit of a painting session of some modern art. Um, this was from the charity shop, this set of four napkins and it's got this beautiful scallop edging and I just could not believe they were six pounds and they're so beautiful. So they're gonna go straight in the, the cupboard for props, which is a cupboard that I really need to sort out. And there's my little, um, my little, it's very large. I am not buying anything for a while um, because that was so much to buy in one week and I was a bit naughty but I feel like I'm getting to that fun phase of renovating where I can't I just I'm so excited that so many of the spaces are finishing so I really want them to feel finished in fact I might go upstairs and see if I can so there's a couple of options for this bedroom here I want to just go and have a look and see if they they would work I think oh, it's really hard because some of these like this would also look great in the green bedroom so so difficult you have to play around I really want to create like a gallery wall I think this could work in the green bedroom let's have a look let's take some things upstairs you have a little bit of a gallery wall going on here but I just felt they were all very similar colors yeah I don't, I don't think this fits the vibe in here. There is a beautiful ship painting above the bed, which I love, but I'm also, no, I love that. That's just, that's perfect. This one, I love this painting, but I think this would look cooler in the hallway. I think it's a bit too spooky for a bedroom. <laughs> I even Sophie was like, oh yeah, I saw him looking at me in the night. Um, and this one used to be in our kitchen and I kind of miss it in the kitchen. This beautiful ship painting. The issue is I've obviously 
hung these very specifically so it's going to be tricky the thing is i changed my mind so much this one though the thing with this painting this is so stunning that i just don't know that it should be as a part of a gallery wall no get me I don't think this works in here actually at all. The colours aren't right in here. Well, they kind of are, but they, it's weird because there's purples and blues on the, these cushions and rug, but something about it. No, it doesn't work in here. I've decided. It will work in the pink bedroom, I think. What about this guy? Maybe he does have to stay in here. Maybe the theme should just be ships. I basically just didn't want it to be too many of the same thing. I do still think actually what is missing in here and something I really need to find, which is a bit trickier in antique shops, is just an abstract painting of just colours, just a contrast, or like, um, like a, like a nude, you know? I quite like that. He's gonna to be too small here for the spacing. This could, the issue with this, the, the, the rope needs to be, would that work? I think that could work. I the rope needs to be tightened. Oh, I quite like that. I was at too many flowers next to each other. Could work here. Quite like a, a canvas leaning up. But is it a bit lost? No, it's lost, isn't it? Interesting, interesting. Maybe let's put this one back. The issue with this one is because it's so bright, because it's a new painting, that it, I feel like it makes, it contrasts that one in not the best way. But maybe that will help, that one. Yeah, I do prefer that without the this guy. And I think I just need to add to it. So I think, you know, doing, he can, that would look really nice actually. Because there's lots of browns in the frame, which is lovely. Let me know in the comments, because I'll come back to it. This is the thing, when you have lots of paintings, you can pick and choose, which is fun. This could work. Oh, that's crooked. That's lovely. Okay, yeah. Prefer that. This is from my parents. Ignore that they're all a bit crooked, but that's... I think I prefer that. But I will watch this footage back and maybe change my mind. And then that go above whereas then that a bit because sometimes you don't want too many but you could have have this kind of thing going on but is it too many these are so cool i'm also wondering if these should live in here above thank you here so you can see kind of the same vibe we've done in our bedroom where we have them above the bedside tables like that could look really cute. The only thing is, I'm not 100% sure because I got these lovely lampshades from Alice Palmer and they are quite a statement. So then having, they'll get lost behind. It might be that I just put one, I put a painting behind here, just one rather than on both sides. So you could have, like that could be cute. I did get this little um, pressed flower that I was going to put over there, but I don't know where it's gone. Let's try this one on the wall as well. I do like these warm, warm tones. That's nice because it's like green tones that match the room. But then the warm tones match the other paintings and kind of give a contrast. That also looks lovely. Just... Let me know which one you prefer. I'm almost varying towards that one. A bit more subtle. Probably hard for you to see in such a small space. The only issue with this one is because it's, well, because they're both glass, they do reflect on the window a bit. Is it too small? Interesting. This, yeah, this could have potential to go in here. Like to take space up on this, but it's so dark. That's my only worry is it's so dark in colour 
that it will become lost. It's whether it's too dark and it will become lost in this space because these rooms are north facing. I don't think it works. No, it's not, it's not the vibe, is it? Might need to go downstairs. Also wouldn't work in our room, it's too loud. Doesn't work with the colors. This is fun though. This could probably be more fitting, it's a bit more fun. If this was to be on this wall as you came in. That's really, really lovely. Maybe some people would think it's too many flowers. <laughs> but I'm really into that look. I'm really into the whole like, as if you, I don't know, as if you've lived in a house or you've literally moved into your grandma's old home and it's all of the mix, mismatched flower patterns and colours. Like, I just cannot believe that this sofa I got on Facebook Marketplace is just so beautiful. It needs a really deep clean, but... I love it, Roxy loves it, she always goes and lies on it and I just love the contrasting patterns and then it just it just feels very fun and when we have children, when we have a baby, this will probably become a nursery. I think, I imagine what we'll do is, I don't know if we'll leave, we might leave the bed in here because it's quite a big room and my thought is obviously if you are looking after a baby it might be useful to have a bed and a nursery so that you can obviously take turns with the sleeping and the looking after in the night. I'm saying all this, we're not planning on having a baby anytime soon, so don't think I'm not pregnant. I literally just had my period. I just like thinking about these things. It's quite nice to ponder the future. Probably would have our baby obviously in our bedroom in a cot while they're young, but when they get a bit older and they can be in their own cot in their own room, this probably will become their room. No, I actually think what we'll probably do yeah, this will become their room and you can move this bed into our dressing room because the bathroom will be done by then and there won't be a big bath <laughs> cabinet in our dressing room. So that can become the spare bedroom slash dressing room. This be can become their bedroom and it's just, I feel like the way it's decorated and the things in here already feel perfect for a, a little boy or girl because it's so colourful and so useful and so lovely and yeah, it just it would really work, I think, for that kind of feeling. So... I feel like that works too. This could be like my little nursing chair. But yeah, that definitely goes, do you agree? This, I think this belongs in this room for sure. Let's look at the other ones. I'm sorry this is really boring. Maybe other people just show you the end result, but I love making decisions with all of you because you're like um, insightful. Oh, I've had an idea for this. So it's too much, I think on either side, but maybe these two could be stacked one above each other here. Hopefully it's not dark and I can look at this footage back. But that, that could be cool. Cause I don't think that these would work in the pink bedroom cause it's already botanical prints on the walls. Yeah, I totally think that would work. Cause also I don't think that these would be right in the hallway. Maybe the landing, they could work if they don't work in here. Crooked. I actually think it works in here. Get rid of the tissue box. Oh, it's still crooked. <laughs> I, I almost prefer it in here because it's like I'll actually look at it every day. Because the dark piano. I think it looks great in here. Do you like it? Because the green matches the green and there's also... Can you put the lights on for me? It's very dark. <laughs> um, this has purple in it. And then we've got these two over here, which are, you know, I could play around with these two as well. Like this could easily go in the green bedroom too. I love that picture. No, I actually love that here. I don't want to move that. I'll open another can of worms. I think I love that there, especially because we are growing our hydrangeas, especially because we're growing our hydrangeas out here and then around the corner. It feels quite fitting. Alex is winding up our clock. Did I show you the um, amazing light that we got on Facebook? Surely I did. Yeah. They've got a freaking plaster all over this. Where do we not cover that? I think I remember you saying that on camera yesterday. Well, sure. this beautiful thing was only 20 quid and we got one from Jim Lawrence. It was far more expensive than that. 
I'm very excited for when all the lights are up. And let me show you our outside light as well. This was from, I'll link it. I can't remember the name of the website, but they had incredible lights that were very Jim Lawrence-esque, Pookie-esque, with um, like really great warranties. I think this has like a 15 year or lifetime warranty. Like essentially like it's, it's saying that it will last forever. And this lantern will go here. <gasps> Could you hold it so I can show you them? Like how cute is that? I just put stuff in the washing machine. I didn't turn it on. It was like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> I love that. Don't nice. you love that? Yeah, it's pretty cool. We were going to get a black one, but um, this one's bronze. I need to brasso it because it's kind of gone a bit warm, but that was the Jim Lawrence one that is that colour. And you want that on there. And I want that on there as well. So cool. Dinner time now though. Good evening from this exceptional orange light. I um, wasn't going to vlog this evening. I don't think I ever vlog in the evenings, really ever. Let me prop you up a bit more with my comb because I like to go to bed and just switch off for the evening. I have a very precious nighttime routine, but I have been meaning to show you my heatless curls for so long. I haven't done heatless curls in a really long time because I've been wearing my hair more natural, but this evening I fancied it because I had a bath and I needed to wash my hair. So in the bath, I used the Aveda shampoo. It's the, I think like pink bottle. It's like the moisture one. Really recommend it if you've got wavy hair. And then I use the Shea Moisture um, hair mask that I got from iHerb. After, if I'm gonna blow dry my hair, I'll use, um, well, I'm gonna put Olaplex on. This has literally lasted me maybe two years at this point. I don't understand how it's lasted so long. <laughs> I don't use it every time I shower. I use it if I'm blow drying my hair, basically. And if I'm not, I use curl cream. So I have like a routine for curly hair and a routine for and I'm blow drying, but you just use like a pea sized amount. That's what my hairdresser told me to do. Alex just brushed my hair for me, which was very cute. Um, he came in and he was like, he was like, oh, your hair is very satisfying. So he just brushed it. He's, I don't actually think in the 12 years, is it 12 years? The very long time we've been together, I don't think he's ever brushed my hair like that when it's been wet. So I'm gonna use the perfect blow dry from Aveda and these little ones, Again, my hairdresser just gave them to me. I think it's like a little wedding present. And they've lasted so long. So this is like heat protectant. And I think it just smooths the hair. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of mousse. I use the Charles Worthington mousse. I actually don't really know if the type of mousse matters. This one I can get in boots easily and I really like it. I don't like to put too much mousse in because then you can feel that you've got mousse in your hair, but I recommend it because it will hold the style. If you don't use it, I find anyway, it falls out easier. You don't need to overdo it. And then I'm gonna blow dry my hair, rough blow dry it until it's like basically dry. So focus on the roots. And um, yeah, get it like 90% dry with my Dyson. So my hair is basically dry. Find my parting again. So I really think that those products actually work because if you're like me and you've got similar hair texture, I usually when I blow dry my hair, I look like Hermione. And while my hair's not exactly straight, um, it is so much smoother like than it used to be if I blow dry my hair. Makes a difference using products when you blow dry your hair, like a huge difference. Take one side, hair tie it off. So I start with a sock. I've tried lots of methods. I have got um, somewhere, not sure where, I have got the official like sock curl thing it was quite cheap so it's probably not the best one but i find it impossible to sleep in because i sleep on my side and i think so does 99 percent of the population and if you try and sleep in your side like on a f hard sausage 
I just don't understand how. It just means I have a horrendous night's sleep. I've tried the dressing gown method and that makes my curls way too tight. So the sock method is my favorite. I'm yet to try the leggings method, which I know like Emily Kaiser on TikTok does. So maybe that's my next trial. But I do like this method because it's a fluffy sock is like bigger. So it's like a bigger shape. So the curls come out a bit less tiny and you can kind of tie it like I'll show you. So it kind of stays out and you don't really feel it when you're sleeping. So I really, really like this method. I'm trying to remember which way around it goes though like that and you basically just wrap it round. I know some people do it where you wrap one way and then you come the other way and wrap like this. That's a method I've not tried so I'm just going to stick with what I know but that's something I could try next time. Um, but it's kind of like doing a French plait but just with two pieces rather than three. Might be a bit trickier actually, I've not done it since I've got like a shorter fringe. And you want to make sure your hair is brushed um, in fact, my hair is a little bit fluffed from blow drying. So I'm going to take a, a little bit extra actually, so I have a long piece to attach. If you've got a fringe, try that so that it makes it a little bit easier. Or just leave your fringe out and curl those separately in the morning. Definitely a consideration. So you just take the piece, wrap it round, grab a new chunk. And you can do this as tight or as big as you want. So if you want like tighter curls, then take smaller sections. And if you want just waves, I just take bigger sections because I really don't want it to be tight curls. I just want it to be kind of like, I've used the Dyson without having to use the Dyson. Also I find actually, in all honesty, this lasts a lot longer. And you want to pull it tight because it makes it more comfortable and it's less likely to fall out. So try and, when you're going down as well, position it like away from your ear. So that's not uncomfortable in the night either. And when you get further down, you want to try and like wrap it over the hair that's already there rather than going too far down the sock because again I find that just means the hair falls out so now I've got to this back piece I'm pulling it really tight over and like keeping the sock to my head you don't want the sock flapping around same as here so you want it like all the way around and then keep wrapping it around don't go further down the sock just keep wrapping around the same position and then when you get to this point, you really want to have a hair tie handy because I'm paranoid I don't have any hair ties. Shoot. Make sure you have a hair ties with you so you don't get stuck. I'm hoping that I have some in my little makeup bag. Is it just me who has like, I literally usually have so many hair ties. Oh, here's one. Buried with some tampons. Tie it off. Like so, and you don't want it to move too much because I've done it tight. Um, the end piece might be a bit funny, but like usually it's such a small piece of hair that it won't be noticeable. But then you basically use the end of the sock and do that. I won't necessarily do this. I might not keep it that way because there is another way where you can like tie it at the back and wrap it, which is a bit more comfortable and less likely to fall out. But for now, I'm going to do that. Take the hair clip out. Struggle to do so because it's got caught on my hair. Oh my gosh. Sometimes I need to remember to buy coloured things rather than black things because it means I can't see it. I do this a lot with hair clips. It's like I can't see what I'm doing because it's black. I don't know how to get that out. It always goes wrong on camera. How do the beauty gurus do it? I cannot see what it's caught on. Ah. Oh my gosh, finally. <sighs> okay, repeat the process. Process? Process? So look at this, is trying to rebel and go curly. No. And just do it on the same, do exactly the same on the other side. If you're anything like me, you're gonna get annoyed if it's not exactly the same. Cause I like it to feel the same on, on both sides. I'm funny like that. So front piece, 
wrap it round. This side's always harder because I'm not left-handed. I'm sure you can tell how much, how worse this side is for me to do. I did it a bit funny. Put it tight around the ear. If you have layers, just ignore if pieces of pieces come out, it doesn't really matter. Oh, and I did it again. I don't have a hair tie. Yes. So you can do the same on this side and loop the sock back up over. But actually one thing that I recently have been doing, I don't know if other people do this or what, but I take it to the back. Oh no, this is gonna fall out. <gasps> right, stay there. Stay there. So, basically roll it as tight as you can and tie it at the back of your head and then pull it really tight. I just find this also makes them stay in place because if you don't do this and you've got them on the side of your head you're more likely for them to fall out. This does make the curls tighter though so I guess it depends what you want and that's it. I tie it like this. If you have a long enough sock you can probably tie it again. I don't bother. I just try and sort of tuck it almost under so it's like really in there and um, it may fall out in the night. Mine often does but Usually it's 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 in there enough that you'll get some kind of curl and you can fix it with the hairdryer. But that's my he uh, heatless curls and I'll show you them in the morning. And fingers crossed they work because knowing my luck, the first time I do this on camera, they won't work. <laughs> oh, maybe I should turn around and show you what it looks like. So that's the, the situation at the back. Hopefully you can see. But to be honest with you, go on TikTok or YouTube and watch an actual tutorial. Good morning. Look how well they stayed in my hair. I had a full night's sleep, very comfy. Um, and then I went for a dog walk looking like this. And I said hello to the builders this morning looking like this. I have no shame. But yeah, I can't believe how much they've stayed. If I do the like method where you wrap the sock at the end, they fall out. So definitely recommend doing this. So moment of truth. Ow. Hair was caught is taking them out and seeing if it looks crazy or if it looks good. Occasionally, it makes my hair very, very curly and I don't love that, but we will see. And occasionally also, it doesn't dry. That's my only worry sometimes. <laughs> you take it out and your hair's still a bit wet. I would actually recommend using scrunchies rather than little hair ties because you're probably gonna rip more of your hair out, which defeats the object of doing this. So, I like to sort of just try and carefully unwind it. It does get a bit caught because you've wrapped it around itself so many times. Not bad, not bad. Some decent curls in there, they look nice and shiny. I can already tell how much better this side is because of how I've wrapped it really neatly. This side is like messy. I do struggle with the other side because I'm Right-handed, look how neat that is. Ah, oh, actually not bad. So I know lots of people say to like leave it for a minute before brushing it out, but I actually don't want it to be this curly, so I brush it out straight away using a wide tooth comb. So yeah, there's some good curls there actually. This side is not as uniform as I'd hoped it would be. It's a bit all over the place compared to this side, which I think is gonna be much more uniform when I brush it out. That's very frizzy. Okay, so work with me here. I'm going to take some hair oil, a couple of pumps, warm it up in the hands, run it through the hair and then separate it out a little bit so it's not quite so fluffy. I think it's worked really well apart from a couple pieces at the back. Like there's these pieces here that just look straight. But I think that looks pretty good. 
considering it's heatless. I mean, apart from the initial blow dry, but I did that on like a medium heat and Dyson isn't very hot anyway. So it's like less heat. You're not putting like tongs on your hair. But yeah, I think that looks pretty good. The oil should absorb a little bit. Let me show you from behind. It's more difficult for someone with dark hair to show you these kind of hairstyles because it doesn't really pick up on camera. I think the front bits are a bit much. They're a bit um, ABBA. I'll leave them this time, but I think next time what I would do is start the sock a bit lower so that these don't go so... Ooh. But yeah, it's very like... But I mean, it looks great. <laughs> I'm very pleased. Anyway, I'm gonna go get started on work in the office for the day and I'll probably see you a little bit later on um, because I took a week off work last week and I have a lot to catch up on. Good afternoon, just come back inside and they have finished, it looks like, the skimming. So we have a hallway back and as you can see they've finished these bits here, ceiling, so it's going to be quite the paint job. It's got to be done. I'm going to probably, I was thinking I found like this spray painter thing that I bought ages ago and I think I'll use that to prime and then I'll decide the colour. I, I still think it should be a colour in this hallway. Um, the second choice beyond the colour is whether to paint all the woodwork the same colour so it creates like a hall. So like I've seen photos where they paint a hallway and it's all blue, including the ceiling, the woodwork, the doors, everything. So we'll to go down that route, which could be impactful, but also it could make everything feel very closed in. Not 100% sure on that. Or the other option would be to paint it blue or a neutral, whatever color we choose, and then keep all the doors. So I want to paint, I've decided actually, I want to paint the outside of the back door and the front door white, but I need to get a carpenter to do some sort of fixing on the door. So like, I want the, the handles changed. They need sort of just fixing up a little bit and then we can paint the inside and the outsides white. Um, like these doors are already white. Uh, I think I kind of want to paint this white. Maybe on the inside I'd leave it wood, but I just think it will look fresher. And I'm just so excited for having a lovely hallway. Like if this is all done, then we can get the lights up, get the pictures up and you walk in the house and it will have a first impression that's really positive. And this door can be painted, handle can be changed so the utility room can kind of be like, nobody go in there. <laughs> but there is a charm about this utility room, you know, something about it. Um, Cause it's like really old. It's very messy because everything's been moved in here from the hallway. Something about it, like having kind of like higgledy piggledy, it feels very farmhouse. And then down here, we're gonna put the curtain rail back up and I want a massive hefty curtain to protect from draft in the winter. I'll put a picture of exactly what I want. Probably like a dark stripe. Um, I was thinking like the stripe could be a navy with beige and then the lining could be navy so that it's really good for um, like dirt. It won't show up and it would be like, really hefty. My hair has actually stayed pretty curly today. It's a bit tangled, I've been like lying and sleeping on it, but look at the volume, like that's the thing when you do sock curls, I feel like it keeps the volume. And I'm not, I'm really not one for neat hair, so I quite like this look. Um, he's gone, he has taken the VW back. We had it for about eight weeks, I think in the end, or seven weeks, and I absolutely loved having that. We um, worked with VWFS, the financial services, and um, rented the car essentially. And I had a really positive experience. He's returning it to Bristol, then getting the train to Surrey. Um, but yeah, go on my Instagram, to stay tuned for the content I made for them because it was a really fun project to work on. And I really loved the experience of working with them and using the car because it felt like I had a customer experience of going to collect the car, really easy. Having the car for that time, um, and then returning it and um, it's definitely made us consider I don't think it would be this year but in the future because we've just got a new car um, I think we would temporarily get a second car that's um, affordable you know a, a budget car <laughs> that we wouldn't have to worry about but in the future we really want to get an electric car 
and I'd really consider using VWFS as like a first option um, and that car specifically the ID3 because I really liked it. I am going to get a bit more work done because it's like half three and then I'm just going to have a relaxing evening and I don't know what I'm going to make for dinner because there's nothing in the fridge but maybe if I make something interesting I'll show you but I highly doubt that I'm going to make anything interesting. Good morning. I'm out bathing in the sunshine and I realise I did not finish the vlog. This is glorious though. This is my first time sitting out and working outside because it's nice enough weather and wow, do I feel grateful. I'm going to do a lot of gardening this afternoon. My motivation to get my work done is so I can spend the rest of the afternoon sorting the garden. I'm so looking forward to when someone's going to come to trim all the bushes and trees because we spoke to someone last week about it. So hopefully that's going to happen soon and that's going to make a huge difference to the garden because it's so overgrown everywhere. But yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry I didn't show you my dinner or anything. I just, I think I just switched off for the evening. Roxy's come to cut on the end of this table because I've just started talking. Um, yeah, hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next one.